There is a very important date quickly approaching. A week from today, Obamacare open enrollment begins. This is, of course, the law to have health insurance. So if you're unemployed or your employer doesn't provide it, the time to figure out how you're going to get your insurance for 2015 is now. So what does this all mean? Ted Jenkins has it all for you. He's the co-CEO of Oxygen Financial. He helps us sort it all out because there's a lot to sort out. And a lot of people just don't know what they're facing here. Let's start with the first thing. When do people need to sign up if they want coverage by January 1st? Well, like you mentioned, open enrollment starts on November 15th, and it goes through February 15th of 2015. However, if you want coverage by January 1, you're going to need to get enrolled by December 15th. Last year, about 7 million people signed up. The uh, congressional uh, office expects about 13 million to sign up this year. So a lot of people are confused. Is the government actually selling the health insurance or are they just providing the exchange for it? Yeah, I don't know why people think this. The government is not in the mm -hmm. business of selling insurance. What they've set up is a federal exchange where, or a marketplace where you can actually buy insurance. And there are different plans that you can buy in there. I kind of think about this like the Olympics. It starts with bronze, and then mm. it goes all the way up, although platinum's not a metal. Mm. It goes all the way up to platinum, and you can get catastrophic coverage. So there's no, you can get it from an independent private company if you want to. You don't have to go to healthcare.gov to get your insurance. Okay, so it's called the Affordable Care Act. A lot of people don't actually know what they are going to be paying for that insurance yet, and they're afraid of what they don't know from what people have heard and what you say is some people yeah. could see it through the roof. Is that not correct? It is, yeah. From state to state, I've seen different renewals, but they've been anywhere from 10 to 15 percent to almost 100 percent increase in premium. I would expect most people to be in that 30 to 50 percent range. You ought to be prepared for that in terms of what the cost will be when you, when you apply this year. First, why the increase? Why such a big increase? Well, think about this. One of the great things about this plan is that everybody can be covered, right? Insurance is guaranteed. So if it's guaranteed, everybody that had a pre-existing condition, if someone has a pregnancy, they're going to be covered. Also, a lot of older plans that were grandfathered are now vaporizing, and they have to get in this ACA uh, act and so they're so basically gonna, they're the money has up. to come from somewhere got to come from somewhere so if I'm sitting at home and I say well if I know what I pay now I'm not gonna be able to afford a hundred percent more so what would the other options be if someone can't afford the health insurance provided well it's a really good question it's tough you know right now there are potentially federal subsidies if you cannot afford the insurance so for example in somebody that's a family of one if they make between eleven thousand six hundred and seventy dollars and $46,680, they could get some or all of the money subsidized by the federal government for their insurance. But if you make less than 11670 on the poverty level, then it would go underneath a different plan. But we've talked about some of these subsidies and, and the challenges of these subsidies. Well, there was just a huge thing that came out yesterday. I don't know where this is going to end up. Mm -hmm. but there's going to be a Supreme Court ruling. About 14 states have their sort of state-run exchange and the District of Columbia, and 36 have are underneath the federal exchange. And so... It remains to be seen how this will shake out about what exactly will be subsidized. So is it possible if people can't afford some of these higher premiums that they would choose either catastrophic or not having insurance? What would the penalty be to not have insurance? Well, unfortunately, not everybody can take catastrophic. That would be a good idea, but you have to be under 30 or 30 or under to be able to get catastrophic insurance in the federal exchange because that could be a good idea. Mm -hmm. So some people may just say, I'm just going to forego it and not have insurance at all. What about the penalty for that? Well, here's the uh, sort of the wrinkle in this, right? If you choose to not have health insurance, the fine is going to be 2% this year, or it'll be $325 per adult, $162.50 per child, to a maximum of $975, whichever is the greater. The big question, Lynn, is how is the federal government going to collect the money, right? So it goes underneath this thing called shared responsibility, which means you either have to put the number on your tax return or they're going to take it from your federal refund either way. So uh, right now, healthcare.gov says there's no liens, there's no levies, there's no criminal penalties. So it remains to be seen how they will actually collect the money. A lot remains to be seen, and, and we'll see how this all unfolds. We luckily have you to break down some <laughs> of it, and we're going to have some more of Ted's tips on our website, hlntv.com slash Weekend Express. But for now, Ted, thanks for being hey, with nice us. Nice to see you.